What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I hope you are all well this evening. We've got movement in Bitcoin, but tonight's video is going to be a bit of a different one. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the new hybrid system update. One of the guys that codes the hybrid system in TradingView is going to talk us through the new settings that are available for you. Now, to the guys that have been with me from day one, you'll be familiar with a few of the settings here, but this video is designed to allow the new person passing through an overscope of what they can get from the hybrid system in terms of the settings that are available. Now, not all of the settings need to be applied, but we're going to have a conversation right now and a little bit of a walkthrough on how to use it and get everything set up and where to go to get this sorted out. All right, so let's roll with it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so my journey with the hybrid system started off with this screen on the right. This is where it all began. MT4. Now, you can trade off MT4, you can trade off TradingView, but this is where I taught myself the hybrid system on MT4. Now, if you want this platform, okay, go to the link in the description and just check out IC Markets and you can download it there free of charge. What you'll find, guys, is MT4 is a little bit of an old school platform. Nonetheless, the coding and the program for the Traders Reality Indicator is based off the MT4 platform. Now, we've added some cool little things in with the indicator on TradingView that you're not able to get on MT4. But the principle is exactly the same. Vector candles are exactly the same on either platform. Okay? So what we're going to do now is, whilst Bitcoin is taking an absolute nosedive to the downside, we're going to bring Peshaw. He's going to introduce himself, and he's going to talk us through the whole new update. All right, so let's roll with it, ladies and gentlemen. All right then, Pesh. So talk us through this whole new thing that you've created, man. What is the story with the new hybrid system indicators, man? Firstly, I want to thank you for taking the time to do this. I know there are other people involved as well. You're taking the forefront for it because... I don't know, man. <laughs> you, you seem to know what you're talking about when it comes to this bad boy here. <laughs> All hey right, guys. Here you go, guys. Hey, Pesho, gu there he is, man. Introduce yourself, bro. Hey, guys. I'm Pesho. Uh, most of you have seen me around in Discord. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, me and a couple other guys in there are uh, working on uh, indicator updates and whatnot. Uh, so here is a video for us kind of trying to explain what is in there, right? Cool. <laughs> for... All right, and so just so I'm this video is going to be like a Q and A. All right, so I'm brand new to the hybrid system. All right, tell me what I need to do to get access to these indicators that people keep on banging on about with the hybrid system. Where do we begin? Well, so the first step you already have, which is you've logged into TradingView on your browser, right? And you have an empty chart. In essence, there's no indicators. This is what you see when you first get onto uh, TradingView, right? And okay. so now we want to load uh, the indicators onto TradingView. Now, the way to do that would be to go over to the Traders Reality website. Like this, okay. Right there. Then if you would go to the start, uh, start here. Yeah. And then first things first. Okay, so click the first things first tab at the top. Yep. Uh, now we have a bunch of general information here, but if you start scrolling down a little bit, and also we have some information on how to join the Discord. Uh, we have the YouTube uh, channel subscription and whatnot, and whatnot yep. channel and whatnot. And then we have down the tools. Now this first one right there, if I can have you pause, this is the main Traders Reality Indicator. If you click on that link, and you can open it in a new tab if you want, with right clicking on it, there you uh, go. this this leads you to the Traders Reality Indicator. Now, how do we get it on the chart? Well, scroll down here, and for the interested folks, you know, you can read some of the text descriptions we've tried to uh, put in there. But if you scroll all the way down, keep on going uh, right there. See that add to favorites button? Click that, so and it will change. Back, right? Okay. Yep, and it will change to remove from favorites. Now, what this did is it basically added it to your favorites. So, if you go back to your first tab where you were already signed into TradingView. Yep. Uh, and now, uh, to find your ad indicators link, which is on your view, would be. Uh, I 
should be somewhere up on the top. It says indicators, yeah. metrics, and strategies. Oh, yeah, Click exactly. That. Click that, and it pops up your indicators. Your favorites kind of show up here, right? You're already on the favorites tab. So what we want to do here is scroll down and find the one that says Traders Reality Main Indicator by Traders Reality. So if anyone did, like, of course, I have it favorited, but for someone that may not find it or go to this route of going to the website, they just simply have to just type Traders Reality in the actual indicators section search bar, and then they'll find it as Traders Reality Main, and this was the one that they would be selecting, yeah? That is correct, yes. Okay, and you can also favorite it from here, guys. See, if you don't have it as a start, it will appear like that. There'll be a, just a blank spot. You just click that bad boy, and then it will add it to your favorites list, which you can see down at the low, right down at the lows. My God, man, I never get out of chart mode, man. As if I just said that. And the Traders Reality main section right there, you're searching for Traders Reality. Okay, so you don't want the Infinex version, all right? Because that's where most of it is right now. If I just see, is it there or has it been removed? Oh, it's been it's been changed. Okay, then. So we're all good. So it stays at the same. All right. And so Traders Reality Main, this is the one that you want, guys. All right. So you press that bad boy, wait for it to load. Then what happens? Oh, it takes a couple of seconds to load, but what it does is uh, it should be loading with the default, um, you know, kind of, I won't call them recommended settings, but there's a base set of settings that it loads up with. Right? So there's uh, usually a little there. bit, there's usually a little bit of a delay as well. Yeah. Yep. Only yep. a few seconds, but nothing that is crazy anyway. So that's, that's all good. All right, then. Cool. All right. And so now, now personally, I use it just like this. I, you know, kind of don't really change the settings that much, but there is a plethora of options available in the indicator settings that we can explore. So you can kind of change it to your personal preferences okay, uh, and make it look, you know, less or more busy, have, you know, turn stuff on or off, you know, whatever, uh, whatever it is that you use the most. Now, a couple of th things before we head into the settings that I'd like to call out here for this new version is um, it does come with the vector candle zones uh, included. So in other words... So the, the little... vector candle zones are these bits here, yeah? Yep. Okay. So these are showing, in essence, unrecovered um, pieces of vectors that price hasn't recovered those. Right? Okay. Uh, but uh, let's head on to the settings, maybe. So if you hover over the indicator, which is uh, right there on your chart, you'd see the little gear icon. Okay. And that gear icon gets you into the settings. Cool. And here is where you can, you know, in essence, change uh, quite a bit, uh, you know, of the look and feel of the indicator. Man, we got loads uh, of settings here. And yes, there is a, <laughs> to a ton of new. settings. <laughs> <laughs> to anybody new, like, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. It will well, all make sense by the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you worry about that. Think of it this way, maybe. You know, we have the understanding the hybrid playlist, right? Okay. And, it, you know, in that playlist, we focus on different conferences mm -hmm. where, you know, you're kind of showing us what, what to look for. Yeah. Oh, well, indicator settings are kind of in line with that right so which confluence in some sense will have a, its own setting that you can take a look at so just looking here at the what you have on the screen you know to begin with you know we talk about you know the the vector colors for example right so you can change the colors if you liked and there's a little description if you hover over the little i whatever tooltip yeah uh, section is that kind of gives you a hint of hey this is what this is you know this is what a vector is this is what uh, this setting does Okay, so that's um, helpful. Yep. Okay, then. Uh, so um, I, I'm guessing it's pretty self-explanatory for the basic stuff like the PVSRA colors and the EMAs showing EMA labels. I mean, this is really basic stuff that you can attach to the chart. So if you were to select EMA labels, you'll then see that the labels of the EMA will come up and it will say 50, 5, and 13 EMA in a sec. There it is right there. So you can see it says 5, 13, and the 50 is just underneath the daily open. You just need to spread that out right there. And then, of course, the 200 EMA is all the way up there, followed by the 800 all the way at the top. So, yeah, so 
sorry to uh, just to kind of call out yes so, uh, most of them are self explanatory but yeah. if you've never used trading view or you know you're new to the whole you know looking at indicators and all that kind of stuff yeah the one suggestion i have for everybody there is like you just saw Tino press the show EMA labels and the labels appeared a few seconds later, right? Play around mm -hmm. with the settings, you know? Don't don't be afraid. There's nothing that, that can break by turning stuff on and off, right? Yeah. Uh, so I definitely encourage that, especially if you've never used TradingView before, never seen an indicator before, you know, it, it can be kind of overwhelming. Uh, the good news is click stuff around. If stuff, you know, see, see what it does, ex experiment with it, see what you know you like and what you don't like and what you want turned on or off uh and if you get into too much trouble to where you've you know clicked a whole bunch of settings and whatnot you know if you scroll all the way down well actually you don't need to scroll see where it says defaults if you just click that and say reset settings it will reset you to the default settings that were on the indicator when you first loaded it so that way you can experiment you don't like something you don't remember how to get back to the original option just reset the settings cool Okay then. So, what else, in in your opinion, like oh, let's break down. I'm I'm completely new to the hybrid system. Okay, what what would I or should I add or change at a basic entry level? Uh, well, so let's start at the top and just go through the options real quick. Uh, you know, so the vector candles, I wouldn't change those, right? Okay. We know we have a red vector, we have a green vector, and you know more information on what those exactly are and the understanding the uh, hybrid system playlist. Mm -hmm. uh, but no need to change them, right? Uh, if we go to the EMAs, the hybrid system focuses on you know the, the EMAs uh, displayed there: the five, the thirteen, the fifty, the two hundred, and the eight hundred. Again, it's a personal preference. If you know, for example, you don't like the eight hundred EMA color, you can change that. You know, so be it. Uh, just below that is the EMA cloud uh, color, uh, which, which is, is that. Boy here. Yep. So if you don't like the color, you can change it. Now, one of the questions we normally get is, well, what is the, you know, what is the cloud represent? Well, the cloud is really a Bollinger band, mm -hmm. right? And it's more of, you know, in the, in the sense of the hybrid system, it's more of like, you know, uh, highlight the 50 EMA so that you know price is going towards it or, you know, you can see clearly that price is heading towards it or away from it. Yeah. There's, uh, there's strategies. Start... There's, there, are, there are a number of strategies that you can apply with the 50 EMA where... This this fifty EMA principle with the cloud is like the Ichimoku strategy as such. You know, if if you can't get above the cloud bit as such, then you know you've got yourself resistance in principle. But rather than going into that, keeping it the same color. I mean, if you were to make the background a gray or a white color, then the recommended color of the fifty EMA would be blue. Okay, so an example of that would be on this chart right here. If you right click on MT4, go to template and change that to white. But if you are watching it in the dark, please reduce your brightness now. That is what the 50 EMA would look like in principle on there. Okay, I just need to add my candle sets. Here we go, drag and drop, press okay. So that's what it would look like on a white screen as such, okay? So if it's on a white screen, change it to blue for easier viewing. And if it's on black, keep it at purple. Happy days. Now. Yep, there you go. Next set. So if we... Next set. Uh, next set is the support and resistance. That's what uh, RS or SR means in this case. Now, uh, again, if we've looked at the understanding of the hybrid play... Uh, playlist on YouTube, um, you know, the M levels are in essence derivatives of the support and, you know, the regular pivot support and resistance levels, yeah. which is why the regular support and resistance levels are not turned on there. Uh, and we have the M levels now for the, the ground. Uh, we were talking about these ones M5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and 0. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, again, we're not going to go into. Yeah, what this, they are, yeah, don't, this... that's in the that's in the videos. Yeah. We'll uh, but that. you know, yeah, you have the option of turning it on, turning the labels on and off, depending on if you want to see the labels. You can change the color of the uh, the, the pivot point, which shows up as PP on the chart. By the way, so if you don't like the yellow color, you can change it to something else. So you can change it to uh, blue or something like that. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Should and uh, the yellow color applies to the to the specific to the midpoint, the yeah. pivot point, right? And again, you can change the color for the M levels themselves. Cool. Okay. Then. And the yeah. And you can change. There's a couple of other options in there. You can change the lines from dash to whatever, but uh, all that. Moving on, uh, we have the uh, high and low for daily, weekly, and we can show the labels or take them off. Um, I'd again, recommend it's... that they keep this on. It's I, it part and parcel of the hybrid system. Keep this setting on whatever the default is. Or whatever the default is, keep it as is. If you are new learning the hybrid system, because we make reference to yesterday's high, yesterday's low, and they are key points in the chart. So try and keep those on. Of course, if you've been with me a long time and you have a good idea of where those zones are without the actual annotation, happy days. But for the new guy, keep it keep it as default as possible. Yep, there we go. Uh, so moving on, uh, we have a big few sections here talking about uh, the ADR, the average daily range. Okay. Uh, now, the average daily range is kind of part of another... Uh, how, Tino, how would you describe the average daily range? The average daily range is pretty simple. The average journey or the journey that price will take from the daily open as such. All right. So hypothetically, if we were to say this is Bitcoin's open price, the average journey that Bitcoin will travel either to the downside or to the upside from the daily open. Okay. Now in Forex, you'll find that most of the time you've got an average daily range in pips for Euro USD, which means that Euro USD will travel on average 50 pips to the upside or to the downside. All right. So what Pesh is going to talk about now is he's going to make reference to this little box right here. And if we were to go on the idea of Bitcoin, it says that Bitcoin's average daily range is 114,230 pips. Okay. And that's the smallest change in price. So you see this 0, 1, 22, 82. Each time that changes, all right, it's a reading of pips. That's why that figure there looks huge. But you've got to remember that Bitcoin is close to five, five figure. Okay. Now. And uh, uh, go ahead. No, go, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I was going to say uh, we do have on the Traders Reality Wiki. Okay. Uh, under the Trading View indicators, we do have a section on there describing in detail. Um, you know, so if you scroll down, I think it's at the bottom. So. And this is in the Trading Trading View indicator. So keep on scrolling. It's way, way, way down. But there is a section that talks about the ADR, how to measure it, how to use the ruler to. Uh, Here we go. And how to verify. There we go. So uh, it starts from here. This this part on the Wikipedia, we have our own Traders Reality Wiki, ladies and gentlemen. And all you need is your Discord login to get access to this. I would really recommend that you read through all of this because Pesh has gone through, gone to the effort to write all of this down. You can get all the indicators from this part of the page itself. You can get the main indicator, which is going to talk about the volume suite and the vector candles and the sessions themselves. All right. Just read through all of this, guys. All right. It's going to give you the basis of everything that you need in relation to the hybrid system. What are the green vectors? And in relation to what we're talking about right now, we're talking about the ADR range. And, note, and notice, look, he's itemized everything that you can get from it. Talks you through the whole idea of how it's populated and what you can do with it. All right. And it goes into a couple of technical stuff right here. But for the guys who understand that, happy days. But it gives you everything you need on every section of this new update. And you can see all of this stuff right here, guys. Okay, so there's lots to take in. But this video in principle is going to help you decipher most of that. If you want more information, just go over to the Traders Reality Wiki. Again, everything you need is in the link in the video description itself. So you can get access to that. It's free to check in, you know, just use your Discord login details. You've got to join the um, Traders Reality Discord and that's free. So you just go there and then come to wiki.tradersreality.com and then go to the members section, use your Discord login and it will give you access to all of this stuff as well. Okay. So I bring yep, that back this, up for you. Uh... There's quite a bit, but, uh, you know, it's not uh, something that will put you to bed, hopefully, <laughs> while reading it. 
Yeah, uh, it's something to refer to. It's a reference point. You know, even with the masterclass sessions, like there's over 75 masterclass sessions in the Patreon itself. You are not expected to watch every single one from start to finish. It's find a strategy that works for you within the hybrid system because there's loads of strategies in the hybrid system. So many ways you can trade it. You just got to find the one that works for you and then run with it. And um, by the end of this video, the indicators can obviously assist you in that direction and work out what works for you. For some of you, you might not even want the ADR up. You know, you might not want to see that. It might not make any difference to your trading, but it adds as part of a confluence. And the confluence is when a number of things happen at one particular time, which would lead to a desired result, favorable and sometimes not favorable. That's that's the harsh truth. Yep. yep. And okay. um, so uh, on the ADR settings, you know, there's a number of settings you could do out there, right? You know, get it from the daily open. Don't get it from the daily open. The default is actually not to get it from the da daily open. It's, why, uh, why Why? not? So why would no one use, why you wouldn't you use the daily open? And why would you use the daily open? That is a great question, Tino. So if we look around, and I do have the links on the, the wiki for the explanations of the ADR, but the classical definition of the ADR is that it takes today's high and low and either subtracts or adds the ADR value to it. And that's how you get your high and lows. Okay, then. And so, so the, the implication of that, unfortunately, is that because as price moves today, right, the high and low might change, right? So price might drop, price might climb. Uh, and that might, uh, uh, you know, that ends up affecting the ADR by the classical definition, right? Okay. Uh, if we're just using the daily open, which is also probably another strategy or another variation of the strategy, that's why we have the option of doing it either, either way, uh, either or. So if you want to take the daily open, you'd click that little checkbox there, uh, and it'll just simply, you know, in essence, take the daily open for the for today. Uh, and don't bother with the high and low, right? Sorry, getting a little too technical there, but uh, again, you know, hit us up in Discord. We can definitely talk about more uh, on, on on some of these. Um, so let's call them nuances nuances of the <laughs> uh, of the ADR. Uh, one thing is, you know, and maybe that's a good segue here is like, well, why so many options, right? Why don't you just have one option and then just do it that way? And as Tino just said, it's like, look, you know, you find a coin, you find a pair, uh, you know, you kind of experiment with it a little bit. You find out what works, you find out what doesn't. Maybe the daily open is what you want. Maybe it's, it, maybe it's not, you know, uh, it's kind of a little bit of experimentation needed kind of deal right the options are there so that you can have the full range of what uh different things you can set yeah it's before it's, we move on it's yeah, and that, yeah. That, that's the truth it's like for example a day trader wouldn't necessarily be interested in the average weekly range unless price is somewhat close to it maybe a swing trader might want to know the average weekly range so the swing trader is going to come here and say show the average weekly range right there so if i were to click that as a swing trader, for example, I'm going to see the average weekly range. Where would that appear? Just give it a second. Where is that? The average weekly range. Maybe oh, it might be a little bit higher. Here we go. There it is there. That's the high of the average weekly range. That's the low of the average weekly range. So when you, you can see Bitcoin is going way beyond that. Okay. So you can see that there is mad volatility and that Price has taken an absolute mad move to the downside, given the current circumstances that we're in. But you would use this range to determine how likely price is going to go from one point, if it's down here and holding, to the next point, which would be the high of the average weekly range. A swing trader would pay attention to these two things. A scalper would only pay attention to it if price is somewhat close to it, you know? And I think that's really important that we give that option, which is there anyway you know, to be able to do that because, and even showing 50% of the average weekly range as well. So if we just go back to that, it's huge. Press that and I can get the midpoint of that happy days. So now as a scalper, I can see if I can trade between those zones or as a swing trader, if price is stalling at this low average weekly range, I might believe that price is going to go up and go beyond the 50% line or the high of the average week and maybe take half profits here and let the rest run. So again, 
you don't have to have this on the system, on the actual setup, but it's going to be all based on what works for you. You know, it, that in itself is a strategy, if I'm honest with you guys. That is, you know, trading the average weekly range. That's what a swing trader would be. He's holding positions for like two, three days, and he's going to hope that it's going to stay higher or lower. So, yeah, man, it's there's lots to get through with the video, guys. I'm, 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 I'm taking up too much of Pesh's time. Sorry, bro. Continue, man. Oh. No, it's, uh, you know, I think it's great. The, you know, explanation is needed and uh, it's all good. One last thing I do want to mention on the ADR is, you know, where it shows the ADR length or the AWR, which is the average weekly range length. This one here. Now, yeah. where, yeah, like, for example, this one says four. Where and why those settings are put uh, to the values that you see on, the, on your screen? Uh, well, uh, long story short is we read a lot of documentation. Those were the values that uh, were suggested. Those are the values we put down with, with, as defaults. Now, can you change them? Yes, you can, right? It, again, it's one of those experimentation things. You don't have to use the defaults if you, know, if you find something that be, uh, works better for you. And that's the point of having all these different options available. So that you can experiment and say, well, you know what? The value of four is good, but the value of five maybe works better for me on, you know, whatever uh, pair I might be uh, trying to trade on. Assuming yeah. you're applying the concepts, right? As, as, as Pesh said before at the start of the video, guys, play around with it. Okay? Play around with it because if it works and you've changed this to eight weeks, fine. It works for you. Happy days. It's not compulsory that you have it at that work with what your strategy is guys this is this is the blueprint and you can now reverse engineer the whole thing if you really wanted to you might not want to include certain things which helps you in your trading so just play around with it guys and if it goes wrong you think your charts look all crazy just go down to defaults again press reset and then it brings it all back to what it was factory settings for the better word <laughs> Yeah, and for the newcomers, guys, I've used this indicator, uh, you know, through its different uh, updates and variations for two years almost now. Uh, I've never changed those settings, you know, so <laughs> if that's any <laughs> any help. Uh, so I never had to play around with those <laughs> settings per se. Makes sense. Okay, then, so same policy with the average monthly range as well. Like I said a minute ago about swing traders, same principle as well, guys. You know, if you want to take a look at what, the average monthly ranges, you select that bad boy, and then you can change the color. Average length is six months, happy days, okay? This is important. We need to talk about this, Pesh, the range daily high and the range daily low. So what's the story? 100% One, uh, correct, yes. And so the range uh, daily high and range daily low is something that uh, comes on on MT4, right? Uh, and they're a little bit different than the ADR in the sense that uh, they take a different setting for the length. That, that's basically it. It's, it's an ADR specialized very specifically uh, to the part of the hybrid system, uh, for the PVSRI part of the hybrid system, right? So the 15, and if you scroll down a little bit to the weekly one, which is a 13, those are very specific to the PVSRA part of the hybrid system. Mm hmm uh, and that's why those values were set. Uh, so changing those values makes them a little bit different from each other, right? So if you compare that to the ADR, which is uh, at uh, uh, what 14. was it, fourteen? I, yeah. I think was the default, right? So that makes a difference, right? And the reason why it makes a difference is it basically says, well, how many candles do I consider in the, the calculations, right? The best thing so to, the, sorry to interrupt you. The best way to understand the utility of the range daily high and low, guys. If I were to activate this and range weekly low, all right, press OK, what you'll see is the following. So give it a second and it will populate, I hope. Has it done it? Yeah, here we go. Yep. There it is. So range daily high, range daily low, in principle, are profit targets. We use them as profit targets. So if Bitcoin is going to sustain this move to the downside, we would assume that at the range daily low, which happens to sit at the average daily range low, the ADR, we would assume that Bitcoin at this point would reverse. Likewise, if Bitcoin comes down, but then starts to continue from this point and move up, if it breaks beyond 
this region, then there is a high chance that if as it get close towards the range daily high, it's going to achieve that because fundamentally, the market maker is going to go to a point in the chart where he's able to grab enough interest from participants to commit liquidity. And that's usually when price is trading at the highs, which is where the range daily high comes into play. And that's why you find that they normally usually reverse from this point and from this point as well. Okay. I just wanted to mention that because people will then ask the question, so what's the difference between range daily high, range daily low? The, uh, the, the ADR range itself is a number of points that on average Bitcoin will travel. You see range daily high and range daily low, okay, don't normally always meet up with the high ADR. All right, because the previous session might not have a wide range. So then the range daily high and the range daily low may be closer, but then the high ADR and the high and the low ADR might be away from these two zones. So don't get too worried about if it's together and if it's not. These are just points in the chart that they are at maximum going to move price based on structure. And then the ADR itself is based on the accumulation of points or the value it can go up or down in. I hope yeah, and to your to your point in some some of the other videos, right? Uh, if you're looking at crypto, that's not regulated. Yeah. So it might exceed those values, which is fine. Yes. Right. But the general, the, you know, what you just described is the general notion of why you would use the uh, range daily and uh, high and low, or the range weekly, high and low as well. Okay then. Next zones, next thing is the show ADR table. So that goes over to this table up here. Yeah, just one option to go out there. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things you can turn on there, right? Uh, and you can change where the table is, you know, what color of the font is and all that. But the key there is that, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, in the beginning is like, what is a PIP? You know, how do I understand what a PIP really is? So what we did here is provided the option to show it in currency, right? So if you're in the USDT chart and you say show it in currency, a few seconds after you pop that uh, checkbox, uh, you see how it updated. And now it says, well, the ADR in PIPs is 11,000 or whatever it is, 114,000 uh, PIPs. <laughs> okay. Man, if you want to, oh, how do you get rid of this bad boy? I want to get rid of the cross. How do we get rid of that? Because it's starting to really annoy me. Look, how do I get rid of this cross? That's probably the zoom setting oh, on there the. It is. Yeah. Okay. So it's just so that I'm trying to show them the, the the figures right here. Here we go. So ADR in pips is right there, and then you go down average monthly range, average weekly range, average daily range times three, average daily range, and then it's exactly the same, but in dollars down below it so that would assume that bitcoin can go travel 1142 dollars on an average day okay right and uh one thing that again to mention the ruler tool don't you know if you want to bring up the ruler tool and just kind of map an area yeah uh you know so the the, the values there correspond to what you get from the ruler tool as well right so see how it says it's minus uh you know, let's, go to, you, let's go to the daily open. Let's go from the daily open. And let's go to the low ADR. Right, so the first number there on the left side of the tool, that's your dollar amount. And the right number, which is the bigger number, that's the peps in essence, right? So it's so measuring. There you go. Yep. That's the pips. So it's here. measuring. Yep, it's measuring the pips and the ADR. So here we're just displaying it in the table for you, so you don't have to use the ruler tool if you know if you don't want to. In cool. essence, right? That makes so sense. it's a convenience, a convenience thing. <laughs> okay, then. Next, move on down. Range daily row ADR table. You can take the table off as well if it's not for you. Just press that. All right. And change colors. We've discussed that. The daily open, pretty self-explanatory, of course. This here, if you do press show historical daily opens, guys, and you press OK, you will get these extra lines on the chart. And it's something that we can't change. Like, for example, look, there's the daily open today. That's yesterday's daily open. And you've got this line going up. We can't do anything about that. But it is a useful tool. 
because you can now see how much of yesterday's range it has recovered. And you can use this as potential point profit targets or support or resistance, however you want to play it. You can see that we looked at this green vector candle. Daily open was up here. No traction to go higher. Resistance can't take it. I've got all of this area here that I would assume price would recover to go into. Happy days to the T. So that really does, you know, it's all again, perspective on how you decide to use the hybrid system settings. Okay. Anything on that, Pesh? Is there anything that you want them to know about it? No, nah, that's pretty much it. Pretty self-explanatory. You know, display the label, don't display the label, display the line, don't display the line, display the historical, don't display the historical <laughs> or change the color, right? It's I mean <laughs> whatever whatever that <laughs> that is available as an option that we could provide, we provide it. This is basically what it is. Cool. All right. And this section here, this PVSRA override, you're going to have to dive into this one, um, Pesh, because this, you know, some people might get a little bit confused with it. But what's the basis of this bad boy? Well, the basis of this bad, bad boy is don't use it if you if you don't need to use it, right? So uh, that's kind of what it is. But uh, to kind of get to explaining of what it is, this uh, what this setting allows you per the instructions there, it allows you to combine multiple exchanges together. Right. Okay. Uh, and so, for example, let's just take that as an example. Let's say I'm looking at the BTC USD chart for um, from Binance. Right. And let's suppose that I wanted to combine Binance and Coinbase for whatever reason. Right. Yeah. Well, then I'll uh, check that check override symbol and then I'll fill in the details where it says index BTC. I'll change that to, um, uh, in essence, Binance colon. Uh, BTC USD plus the plus sign. Binance um, colon plus the BTC USD sign. Yep. And then put a plus uh, there. Yeah. Put a plus there. And then you would say Coinbase colon BTC USD. Uh, I'm not sure if it has to be capital letters. Uh, all right. Let's just go capital with, letters. Yeah. But it has to be all caps, basically. Yeah. All caps. Let's just draw that back there. So it's type. Finance, and we've got the plus sign Coinbase, and then BTC USD, and then yep. just press OK. Yep. So we're probably not going to see much change here because Binance is by far more volume than uh, than uh, Coinbase. Uh, really, what that does is it will change the kind of uh, kind of vectors. You know, the vector colors might change here and there depending on the diff uh, different exchanges you've uh, selected. Again, not to get too too technical into it, it's an option I've personally never used. I know some people find utility in it, so it's there as an option. Uh, it does tell you that it's turned on, so you don't forget just in case. That's why you have that uh, label there. Um, you know, for the newcomer, I'll say disregard that option and don't don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. And if not, let's have more discussions in Discord. Okay, cool. So we'll go back to that point. We get rid of that. And get rid of that. Out. All right, then. Next, the vector candle zones. I know a lot of people like to use these bad boys. All right. So this is the one big change, I would say, to the indicator from the previous version, right? Okay. We managed to jam the vector candle zones in it. So it only, you know, so we only need this one indicator in essence, right? Um, so the settings are pretty much the same as, uh, you know, the, the original vector candle zones. You know, you can select how many zones you want to draw. You know, do you take the wigs? Do you just take the body of the candles? Uh, you know, do you override the chart color? Do you use the the, the vector candle colors, which is that override uh, chart color down there? Uh, you know, so a lot of different options that you can choose from. Ultimately, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to show you unrecovered vector zones, right? You had a vector, it wasn't recovered. You know that there is some liquidity sitting there, right? So that's an example of this shaded area here goes across that's a red vector candle zone that hasn't been recovered and i know you can change the color so that it actually represents the color in the chart because you could be on the one minute time frame and you know you might be somewhere in the chart where you're not going to be able to see it visibly okay so or you could be like for example this area here there are no vector candles inside of here because it's shown is shown there's one up here and one here yeah, when you go into the smaller time frames, there's probably vector candles in there, all different colors. So you can change the color of it by going into 
where do you go to change the color? Is it just override color? How do you do? Yep, how do you change uh, it? Uncheck that checkbox, and when you uncheck it, it means it's going to take the regular vector count of colors. And so, okay. in a second or two, it should change on your chart. There we go. So those are red. Those are red. Happy days. So now I don't need to worry about that on the one hour time frame because I know that there is a red vector candle zone on the one hour time frame that needs to be recovered. Actually, no, that's wrong, isn't it? Because this red vector zone on the one hour time frame is going to be made up of a number of different candles, isn't it? So it doesn't. It is. So it doesn't show. So that's, this is important. So this doesn't show the one hour red vector candle zone on a lower time frame does it no so okay. this is on the time frame you're on right uh we are looking into uh, expansion features into the future where we can do lower time frames but right now it is you know whatever time frame you're on that's what you get okay um, just so that you guys can see other candles how it looks on other candlesticks that's how it looks like there we mainly lots of red vector candles to recover now if we were to go to the right of the chart i mean You've got a setting, haven't you, Pesh, where it eliminates the actual vector candle once it's been recovered, hasn't it? And you've only got it set to a certain amount of candlesticks in the past. So uh, you... Yes, for the most part, that's exactly right. So once a vector is uh, recovered, it, you know, the, the little highlight, the, the color disappears from the chart because there's nothing to recover there anymore. So, yeah. Uh, so that's why we only and... see red vectors above. Yep. And... Uh... You know, uh, some of the settings there where it's the body only with body with wick. You know, if you play around with those, depending on what you want to look at, you know, that, that's where it is. Personally, I like the body with wick setting. That's something that has worked for me. Um, but, you know, it, it's again kind of a personal preference there, what, what it is that you want to see exactly, right? Okay, and cool. they will be colored. It just so happens that right now price action is such that we only see red vectors. But you know, if there were a green vector, let's go it, have a look on green. smaller time frames just for demonstration. Let's go to a three minute time frame. There's a green vector there, I think. That should be a green vector candle. There you go. See that though? See that? Because Sydney's open now. You see that zone? That's a green vector candle zone. That is being recovered, yep. and you can see it's disappearing as it's recovering each aspect to it. So then we go back, if there are any other green vector zones, see that there. That principally would have a green bar going across, but because it's recovered, done. Is it? Does it give you the option to keep them present on the chart? Uh, not at this point, and the reason for that is uh, kind of technical in nature. No, that's but fine. Long, that's long fine. story short is we can only have that much data to work with, and you know, can keep everything on uh as it is no that's cool all right then so that's that the vector candle zones change the transparent of it right there guys so if you don't want it to look too bright you just change the, um, the transparency and then it just lightens it or darkens it for you all right market yeah. sessions man this is this oh is market sessions bit. this is the other the, it's actually my favorite bit because that's probably the bit i worked on the most uh, hmm. um but uh, let's start with the show market sessions on the weekends, right? So right now we're in a weekend, right? Yeah. Sydney just started because uh, technically it's Sydney. It's already Monday, yeah. right? Um, and I'm based in the US, which means it's still Sunday for me, right? Uh, which is kind of the confusion of time zones. But um, I usually turn that on. Right? I like to know when the sessions are, regardless of whether or not I'm in the weekend or not, right? Now, keep in mind, this, you know, the markets are closed on the weekends. But it's just a nice visual cue uh, that I like to keep on, on my chart, for example, is to turn those on. Okay. So if we go to the chart now, go all the way down. <clears throat> all right, then. So line style markets, market sessions on. Click this right here, and you'll see that the weekend to the left, which is where we are here, should come on. There it is. You and see there those there? Awesome. So it populates the weekend sessions in the chart. And you should not be trading weekends, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Look, Bitcoin hasn't done anything all weekend. And then coming close towards Saturday, Sunday, look at where we are right now. Markets principally are open in Sydney. We've got some bad movement. So always, always stick to trading the busiest times of the week. Okay, then. So I've activated show market sessions on weekends. Again, this gives you a bit of a description. 
and another one here as well. Um, yeah, so this is important to talk about. Um, note, do not turn this on for exchanges that don't have weekend data like Ananda. So you can trade crypto on other platforms like IC Markets, Ananda, FXCM, but they do not operate over the weekend. But you can trade the actual Bitcoin and, and, and Ethereum on IC Markets, but they have specific times to trade it. So Ananda do allow you to trade it and IC markets allow you to trade it, but only at specific times, all right? So in other words, don't trade the weekends, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna keep telling people to do that because it's a, such a treacherous time. It is, 100%. I've been bitten myself on the weekends a few times, so. And there you go, you know? <laughs> all right, then, so this is, the, this is something that I've done, guys, particularly, is I've removed the market session names because you can see already with all the stuff that we've activated on here, it's starting to get a little bit clustered, okay? But you can change the names, all right? So this is how I would be setting mine up. If I scroll all the way down towards that zone again, the market session, all right? So London, I like to just get rid of the whole word and just leave the first letter, okay? And then do exactly the same there for New York, but put New York as NY. Oops. And then go down to Tokyo, put that down to T. And Hong Kong, we change that to HK. And then Sydney, I change that to S. And then go down to E. I'll get to the EU brinks in a second, but this is how it would look. Looks a little bit more cleaner once it populates it. Give it a second. Three, two, one. Bang. Dude, man, it's not working. What's going on? Why is it taking uh, forever? It is taking a little bit of time, isn't it? Well, it's, see, the T has changed. The Tokyo has oh, changed. Oh, there you go. The Tokyo's trained. Yeah. There it is right there. Sorry about yeah. that. So Tokyo, Hong Kong, and then you see right there in the corner, it should say, there you go, NY, right there. Remember, this is the weekend. And if I want to do exactly the same for the EU Brinks, just go back into that same section and then simply just change it to EUB. So just change it to EUB, whatever it is, and then change this bad boy to USB. Happy days, just don't put USB-C. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days indeed, yes. No. Uh, and that should, there it is, EUB, and then USB New York, happy days. And it just tidies up your chart as well, guys. Look, like this box right here, You'll soon, to, you'll soon start to understand the average daily range on Bitcoin, all right? So I don't need that. Show ADR. I get rid of the ADR itself. And where's the ADR box? It should be further down. Show AMR. ADR table, there it is. I just click that. Press OK. Done. And it should clear up my chart very shortly. There it is. Looks much cleaner, you know? Because, you, you know, as much, you can fill this chart up with loads of stuff, but it's not going to help. It's going to distort your trade. I mean, even with this stuff here, I would want to abbreviate the daily open to DO. Yeah? And even yesterday's low, YDL. You know, and YD high, YDH. Just try and keep it abbreviated. But for the new guy, if he needs that, there you have it there. It's, you know, as in time gets passes by and you use this all the time, you'll start to say, right, I want to make it a little bit cleaner for my eyes. Okay. Yeah, the more you use it, the more you get used to what, what it represents, and then you start uh, needing less and less of these uh, labels. Again, we, we're trying to, you know, give the big plethora of options, so it applies to, you know, somebody who's coming into it right now, and it's like, I don't know what I'm looking at, you know, to, you know, going all the way down to, it's like, I've used this so much that I can do it with my eyes closed kind of deal, right? Yeah. What does the uh, what's this story with the opening range? Controls the shaded area for the session. So if I just have got that activated, I'm gonna take that off. So if you look at the area itself here, you can see that, that is the opening range as such. So if I get rid of that from uh, yeah. a tra from someone's perspective on London, right? So there is EB, EUB, London session. If I remove that, what does it do? Well, it will remove the shaded area. There you go. Uh, 
on the box, right? And the shaded area is nothing more, but it, it's kind of just the first candle for that session on the time frame you're on, right? So it's like, and a, yeah. It's kind of like a here's where it opened kind of deal, right? And uh, the shaded area goes all the way to when it's supposed to close, right? So here's where it opened. This is the candle where it opened. This is the candle where it closes. So if I remove uh, all opening ranges for all the sessions, okay, that then you, again cleans my chart up even more. So if I press OK after deselecting opening ranges, see that? See, now yep. I've got dashed lines for the absolute high and the low. So these can kind of like act like, you know, psychological ranges. It takes the first high of the session and then it takes the low of the session and marks it off and you don't have that red shaded area. And it just cleans your chart up just that little bit more. You know? So you can see how how much cleaner it looks. You know when the New York session's open. You know when the UK session is open. Quite frankly, you could keep on just the actual Brinks box zones themselves. You know, if you just want to trade the Brinks boxes. So then that means you go and just trigger EUB. Just keep that on there. And then keep the US Brinks one. And you should see that populate in a second. Should come up with that sh gray shaded area. Press OK. There it is there, you see that? There it is, that's the area. EU Brinks, and that's the US Brinks. So- And uh, work, I'm sorry to interrupt, you know, right. just worth mentioning, uh, you know, so apart from the shaded area, which is basically the width of the candle that the session started with, we also have the high and the low, which are the little dashed lines uh, that you can see there, just slightly- so yeah, yeah, dashed up there, and then there's the low down there. Yep. So that, that's also an option you can turn on and off. You can change the colors and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, again, Tino, as you said, after being in the game for a while, you know exactly when New York opens. You know exactly when the, the Brinks yeah, box it's, is. It's, it's in time. This is for the person that needs to familiarize himself with these zones because behind these zones, there are strategies. There are strategies that we talk about that you can exploit on the hybrid system. For example, one strategy would be the significance of why when the UK Brinks session is higher than the actual US session Brinks, what does that tell us? In other words, if the US Brinks session can't get above the UK's Brinks session, then we would understand it to be a point of resistance. And you'd have to have a collection of vector candles which would solidify that basis and then you would trade that idea. If it can't get above the UK Brinks, there's a good chance that the US Brinks is probably going to trade away from it because the UK Brinks has done or prepared price. But that's for another conversation. Yep, and I really like how you put it into perspective, right? So that's why the options are there, right? You either use it or you don't use it. Somebody might be asleep during uh, these particular times, depending on where in the world you are. You know, let's say I was in, uh, I don't know, Europe somewhere, and maybe I don't care about the New York session. Turn all that stuff off, right? <laughs> yeah, it's important, you know, because everyone gets it in their head that they need to trade all the time. No, you don't. You do not need to trade all the time. All right, next point is this psychological levels. This is where it gets a bit interesting. It gets so a little funky. Through, yeah, so <laughs> talk me through it. Uh, so again, we have the psychological uh, levels for the week. Now in crypto, those are defined as, uh, you know, they calculate for eight hours starting at the Sydney session, right? But if you wanted to see how historically they, they've traded, if you want to examine all the different uh, parts of the hybrid that we talked about uh, on the psychological uh, levels, then you turn on the historical values. That lets you go back in the chart and look, oh, this is how it uh, behaved this week, and this is how it behaved the week before, right? So there, there's a pattern there to be seen. So that that's uh, really all about the psychological history uh, uh, checkbox. You can change the color. I know a lot of, uh, at least I know of one person who very much likes to have the psychological high as green and the psychological uh, low as uh, red. So you can change the color. And the next section is where it's a little bit kind of tricky, right? Uh, now, this version of the indicator does come with an auto-adjust, which means it will auto automatically select if you're on crypto or uh, Forex pair. So if you're, let's say, on US uh, DJPY, it will know automatically that it's it's on, on Forex. Now, Forex is closed on the weekends, right? So there is no Saturday 
Sydney session for us to calculate the uh, psychological level. So what really it does in the background is it says, okay, I'm going to take, you know, in essence, uh, the Tokyo session instead, the Monday Tokyo session, and that's where I'm going to calculate the psychological levels uh, for the indicator. Mm-hmm. Now it will do it for you automatically. There is a few, and let's not get into the, you know, kind of edge cases there, but there's a few scenarios where it uh, it won't be able to auto adjust for you, which is why we also have that override button there. So if you click the override button, that means you can flip flop between crypto and forex at your whim, you know, whatever whatever pair you're trading at. Uh, on the chart okay cool so if i have it selected so right now i don't need to so right now if i go to euro usd it should be printing psychological levels yeah here we go uh well uh, it's not yet it's not yet opened the it's not yet open yes so in the next three minutes it will open but principally this would then start forming the psychological levels yeah. Yep. So then yep. when I go back to that, if I go back into it and override, what does that mean? What will happen then? Well, in this particular case, since the Euro USD exchange or Wanda is closed right now, nothing will happen if you if you change it. But let's say it was during the week mm-hmm. uh, and you hit override, uh, then you for Wanda very specifically, because Wanda operates at very specific times, you'd always want to have this uh, option set to Forex, regardless of what pair you're looking at, right? So if, right. even if you're looking at uh, Bitcoin on Oanda, you'd still want to set this setting with the override checked and then the crypto setting set to Forex. Okay, that makes sense. Now this one here, man, this is the last thing. This bad boy, daylight saving. When do they- Daylight on? saving. <laughs> oh, what a, what a stupid thing. So when would someone activate this? When would they not? So the daylight and time zone and all these changes that happen because of you know shifting times between summertime and fall time and winter time and whatever it is, it's confusing, guys. I mean, uh, <laughs> why did you include my... it, man? What's the point in including it? It's it serves no that... purpose. <laughs> exactly. It serves, <laughs> yeah, it serves no purpose, but it tells you when those times changes for the different markets. So let's say I'm sitting in the United States, right? Mm-hmm. If I turn that on and I'm like, man, you know, I know London doesn't change uh, summertime the same time the United States does. When does it change it, right? I don't have to go Google that that uh, piece of information and get even more confused because it's, you know, that time, time zone changes are very confusing. So it's basically my, my question place. to you is, sorry to interrupt you, why have you not put another one of these bad boys here? You know, you see this little information box. Why have you not bothered here? <laughs> Well, so if you turn it on, <laughs> it takes up part of your screen. It's quite a big part. From, really? From that I've yes. never turned that on. Here we go. Press OK. So turn it on and take a look at it. So it should show up here in a second. There it what? is. <laughs> it what? tells you when each market changes its DS, you know, daylight saving time. I know in Europe, some people call it summertime. Uh, oh my God. In the States, it's daylight saving time, but... You know, that's what it is. And that's why it it is horrible. Yes. (laughs) Look at that. Well, it's a good reference point. Look, we can't deny it. Look, that is, that is brilliant. Like, thank you, man. You know, it's, it's, that makes life a lot easier, but I am more than glad to remove that bad boy. And And actually that would probably come. uh, Some of you might remember some time back, a few versions back of the indicator. We actually had to set those settings manually. You had to go in the settings and check a checkbox. Yeah, I remember that. And I remember that I was, I never did it as well. (laughs) I never made (laughs) the changes. That, yeah, so that table's purpose was really meant to say, well, if you know what time of the year it is, you know, which week you are, uh, this table is meant to help you if you know you can check check that specific daylight saving times box. Right now, everything is automatic, uh, just automatically for you. Uh, so, Tino, I think you're right. The next update would get rid of this feature. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. All right, and Pesh, listen, bro, that is that is brilliant, man. Thank you so much. I mean, if there's if there is there any you know, words of wisdom from your end, you know, that you would advise anyone new when it comes to using this indicator, given that we've got this new update, like what would you recommend they do first? And, you know, where would they need to go if they have any questions? I'm asking because it's probably me that's going to come and ask you the questions. But anyway, (laughs) 
Well, uh, so uh, my recommendation is don't be afraid to play with the settings. Play around with the settings, see kind of what works with you. Now, I'm assuming you've already gone through Tino's understanding the hybrid playlist uh, on YouTube. You've watched a few streams. You're catching up. Uh, you know, so those, you know, the, the concepts of the confluences that the indicator provides are described in those playlists, right? Uh, but as far as the indicator is concerned, that, that's probably my number one words of Winslow. Don't be afraid to play around with the options, right? Play around, see what works for you, see what doesn't, see what you like, see what you don't like. Uh, come drop us a, you know, a hello in the indicator chat in Discord. If you have any questions, indicator chat in Discord as well. And no, also we will take... Discord. So that would be over here. The indicator chat, this one here, yeah? Right there, yes. Um, so there's always is... somebody... Yeah, there's always somebody in there, either myself or Scorpio or one of the other guys uh, that are happy to take your questions and uh, try to get you on the right path. Wicked, wicked. Yeah, right. everyone, it is, it is a good place there. Be, you know, Scorpio does help out. So, I mean, for any technical questions, I mean, I ain't going to ask you technical questions. I'm just going to say, Pesh, it doesn't work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have no idea. And also, um, what about versions as well? Just in, just for the guy who's um, who understands it a little bit, just to make sure that you're using the correct version. So I'm guessing, is it Pine Editor? Go to Pine Editor and you select the current version, which is, I mean, look at these versions of the hybrid system, man. Oh, my God. But there actually, go. these are, sorry to interrupt you, these are actually the versions of the previous indicator. Since we made a new cut here, right? We published them to the Traders Reality account. This yeah. is actually version one. But how do you find that? Let's actually do that uh, okay. today. So if you close this out uh, and then see the little two drop down you have on the top uh, right of your chart where the indicator name is supposed to be. Um, where's that? Over here? Uh, uh, where the indicator name was supposed to be. You have it closed right now, so oh, it doesn't okay. yeah, display. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So if you hover that right next to the gear icon, we have this curly braces thing, right? If yeah. you hit that, it will bring up uh, the indicator in Pine Editor, right? And here is where the versions uh, show, right? Right next to the name, right next to the little spyglass. There you go, right? So this is where you would end up checking if you have the latest version. If if this blue box that that is there is not on the highest number, you're not using the latest version of the indicator. And so then you follow the that. yeah. Unfortunately, trading view the way it kind of uh, you know if we post a new version, it doesn't automatically update your chart. So you kind of have to like follow that tedious process of you know get rid of it from the chart, get rid of it from your favorites, uh, oh, uh, you know really? go favorite it again. Get it back uh, back in your chart. Uh, it's a little bit of a tedious process. Unfortunately, that's a trading view thing. We can't uh, necessarily change that at this point. Uh, we have that process very well described on the wiki. And of course, uh, one of our members is always happy to help in indicator chat if you run into it. Like, well, you know, how do I, you know, do, have I updated or not? Yeah. But this is this is the general way of doing it. Yes. Wicked. You know what, Pesh? Thank you so much for this, man. It's I'm trying to keep it within an hour. It's now an hour and two minutes. I think that is a good tutorial on the uh, for the updated version of the hybrid system, man. And if you know if anyone has any problems and what have you, then again, make your way into the Discord and go into the indicator setup um, channel and have a conversation in there. And um, you know, Pesh, Scorpio, and everyone else involved in the development of this will try and help you out to the best of their ability. All right. So all indicators, all the links, everything that you need to the TradingView wiki, to the actual website, everything is in the description of the video, guys. Get it checked out. Take your time. Don't rush. But as Pesh said, play around with it. All right? You don't have to have everything activated because as you progress as a trader, you'll find that you start to take a lot of this stuff off. What you've got to do when you first start out is to be aware of how price behaves around certain zones so that in time you've imprinted it in your mind and you kind of got a good idea of how price is going to behave within a specific area. All right? Pesh, thank you so much, my bro. Mad love and respect to you, my friend. Guys, Yo. take care of yourselves. Peace.